Hey ladies, welcome, welcome, welcome to tonight's training. This is our very first training in Female Investors Academy. So I want to welcome each and every one of you to the group. I'm excited to get started. We're going to have trainings here often. So um, I wanted to start out with a general question that I always receive. How do I get started in real estate investing? So I'm going to give everyone a couple minutes to join in. It's about 7.04 p.m. Central Standard Time. We're going to get started in about maybe two to three minutes, giving everyone a chance to jump in. And if you are watching the replay, go ahead and drop hashtag replay so that I can um, just support you, just comment, um, and just make sure you don't have any questions as you're watching the replay. Hey, Stephanie. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining. And I am going to take a couple minutes and let everyone join in. As you join in, also let me know what's, what state you're from, where you at, so I'll know um, how I can direct you with specific questions that you may have about real estate investing. Of course, because there are so many different things in every state, I want to make sure I'm helping everyone. And we'll get started in about two minutes, ladies. And let me pull it up on my phone so I can make sure I don't miss any of your questions. I know there's going to be a little um, lag on Facebook. So I want to make sure I don't miss any of your questions while, while we're live today. All right, Stephanie's from New Jersey. Welcome, Miss Jersey. Hey, Helen, welcome. You're in all of my groups. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love seeing that from ladies. So supportive. All right, so ladies, do me a big, big favor. Drop a one in the comments. Let me know you can see my screen clearly and that you can also hear me clearly. I want to make sure everything, there's no techie issues before we get started. I want to make sure I answer everyone's questions. Miss Helen is from South Carolina. Cool, cool, cool. I think Myrtle Beach is one of my favorite places. We had a, a family reunion there about five years ago. And every time we plan a family reunion since then, I always want to come back to Myrtle Beach. Loved it there. All righty. So you guys can see and hear me clearly. Cool. Okay. Awesome. 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 Okay. I'm going to, going to give it about one more minute. And then we'll get started. Let me share it with some ladies here in the group to make sure they're not missing out on what we're about to learn. Ladies, I hope you have your questions ready. Um, this is going to be an open-ended conversation. I'm going to go through about five, I believe I have like five tips. And then I want you guys to ask your specific questions because I want to help you. Um, I want to help you guys get to where you need to be. I don't want to um, be in a different direction than what you're actually thinking about. So make sure you have your questions ready. And then... Um, Whatever I don't answer during the main session, you can ask in a Q&A session. Oh my God, Helen, he proposed on the beach in Myrtle Beach. I know that was beautiful. Oh, and one of my favorite places. That was so sweet. Oh, 
Nice, nice, nice. Hey, well, hey, Tanya, welcome, welcome. We're just talking about, <clears throat> about Helen getting engaged on the beach in Myrtle Beach. Congratulations, Helen. <clears throat> Guys, my voice is going out already and I haven't even started. I've done so many broadcasts in the past week. My voice just keeps going out and usually it goes out at the end. But we're at the very beginning. <laughs> so I'm going to be drinking a lot of water. All right. Okay. Let's get started. Hey, Joy. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay. So we have several ladies here. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, as we go through, um, if you have any questions about that particular uh, <clears throat> topic that we're covering, go ahead and ask those questions. Um, if it's something that's totally off topic, I ask that you just hold those questions until the end. We're going to have a, a live Q&A session at the end. And this is going to be um, a training. There's not going to be a thing for sale <laughs> at the end of this training. I just want to give you pure value, um, teaching you guys how to get started in real estate investing. So ladies, um, drop a one in the comments if you're just getting started in real estate investing. Drop a two in the comments if you've already started your investment career. You just need a, a little bit of a boost. <clears throat> Okay, um, you are supposed to hear, I think it's Tink, you are supposed to hear. Everyone, let me know if you can still hear me. It looks like we have um, Tink Sanders that's not able to hear. Okay, it looks like Tink is the only one that can hear. Let me just type in the comments. Okay. All righty. So it looks like Tink is the only one that can hear. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Hopefully um, Tink can log in, log out and log back in really quickly or get to a space where she's able to hear, um, hear what we're talking about. So let's go ahead and get started. Welcome, welcome ladies um, to our very first training here in Social Media Lifestyle. It's all about how to get started in real estate investing. Um, I am super excited to share this with you because this is something that I have loved ever since I was a little kid. Um, I grew up with five sisters and brothers, and every weekend my mom loved going to garage sales and estate sales. I hated going for the shopping, but I loved to go to see the homes because I was so in love with the different styles of homes, the different architectural, the details inside and out of homes. And that was like the age of 10. So I've loved real estate as far as I can remember. <laughs> so I'm here to tell, show you guys tonight exactly how to get started in real estate investing. <clears throat> so today we'll take the confusion out of getting started. Make sure you stay until the end so that you, we can go through our Q&A. The questions that you have wrote down, you can just ask me anything about investing. So who am I? I'm going to keep this quick and to the point because most of you already know me. A lot of you are in my other groups. So you guys um, have been around for pretty much a while. Um, a few of you are in my social media lifestyle membership. Um, so a lot of you know me. So what I do is help women create multiple streams of income online and in real estate. I've been a licensed realtor for about 18 years 
and I've been helping investors purchase and sell their properties for a profit. Um, some of them for a huge profit. Um, I think my biggest win with an investor, well, I wouldn't say my biggest win, but the biggest win for um, an investor that I was working with, he purchased the property that was a foreclosure um, at 99,000 and he resold that property for 225K. So that was a huge win. So um, that's why I love helping people invest in real estate because you can do so many things with the, the money that you can make in real estate investing. Ladies, um, comment, drop a, a comment or let me know in the comments. Um, what's your reason for wanting to start real estate investing? I know some ladies say that they want to leave their nine to five. They want to um, um, take trips with their families. They want to do different things, but just drop in the comments. Let me know exactly why, why you want to start real estate investing. Awesome, Tink. Let me know if you can hear us, hear me clearly now. And I just noticed that I, I left my social media website up. Knifeyburks.com is my social media website where I help women um, organize and automate the social media process. Um, I do have a real estate website, but ladies, I rarely ever use it. I just talk to people and give them the information that they need. <laughs> so <laughs> to be honest with you, my, my real estate website is my real estate Facebook page. So. Okay. It looks like there's a huge delay. Okay. So let's see. Tanya wants to invest to make money and to have my, her own beach home that can send that I can send out and use whenever I want. Now, you can rent out. Okay. I see like an Airbnb. Yeah. That's what, you know what? I was actually thinking about that today because, um, about a year ago, my uncle bought a, a lake house in um, Indiana. It's right on the lake, on Lake Michigan. And we all, we've been going there for holidays and different things. And it's so much fun being there. I was actually in the store today and a lady was buying stuff in front of me. And she was telling the cashier, we're going to our lake house for three weeks. And I'm like, I can't wait till I can get to a space or a place in life where I can just say I'm taking three weeks off and I'm going to my lake house for three weeks. So yeah, that's an awesome idea. Stephanie wants to put larger amounts into savings. You can put some huge amounts into, into savings with real estate investing. <laughs> Let's see. Helen says, I've always been interested in real estate and property management. I like to have enough rental income to retire comfortably. Yeah, Helen, I used to, when I first got started, I was actually into in property management. Um, when I had my daughter, um, well, she's not, she's about to turn 20. So about 20 years ago, I was the broker's assistant for a management company. Um, and that's how I got into real estate. She was so busy. She, she asked that I, get my license to help her on the sales side. And that's the, the reason that I decided to get my license. I'd always loved homes. Um, and I was excited when I got the job for her at the um, property management company, but I didn't think about getting my license until she asked me. So that's why I ended up getting my license to help her out. Oh yeah, I know what you were saying, Tanya. Okay. All righty, ladies. So let's move forward. So here's my daughter. We were in, um, oh, um, this was downtown Taste of Chicago a couple weeks ago. Um, we were there with a lot of my family members. Um, she is 19 years old. She's in beauty school. She wants to eventually own her own salon and spa. Um, and that's my baby. She's going to be my baby for, forever, even though she's 19 she's still going to be my baby. 
when she gets married, she's still going to be my baby. <laughs> so that's my daughter, Anaya. And I live, guys, in the Windy City, Chicago. I will soon be relocating to Tampa, Florida, where I'm going to be hosting amazing real estate events for women. I'm going to be hosting social media events for women. Um, but right now I am in the Windy City, Chicago. This is one of my favorite places. Buckingham, Buckingham Fountain, which is downtown Chicago, in the middle of Grant Park, um, a place where everything happens. All of the concerts, um, well, not all of the concerts, all of the major things happen basically around this fountain. <laughs> Thank you, Tanya. So guys, you're ready to get started in real estate investing, but you may have 150 questions that stop you from moving forward. D ladies, tell me how many years have you been thinking about real estate investing? I know for myself, I can say at least since I was about 24, I've wanted to invest in real estate. And that's when I bought my first home. Um, I didn't see it as an investment, so I ended up selling the house. Well, not selling it. I um, uh, gave it over to my parents. And I, because I really didn't look at it as an investment at that time, I am now in my second home and I'm looking at this as an investment. I purchased my property for um, 95000 about five years ago. And guys, guess what the value of my home is now? over 240,000. So that's my investment. <laughs> that's my investment. I'm about to take that cash and run. <laughs> so Tanya, since about 15, Tink, since about 22, um, Stephanie, two years now, just recently, Stephanie. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So you guys, um, I know a lot of people come to me because they, they're watching HGTV and they want to flip houses just like HG, HGTV. You guys, a lot of you want to leave your nine to five. Um, you want to buy homes and rent them out or you want to do what Tanya says. You want to do this new thing that they call Airbnb. So you may have a lot of different ideas going on, but we're going to kind of clear some of that up tonight. So let's dive into the five things that you can do to get rid of those questions that you have. And guys, I have to be honest, I was going through this like late last night, these slides, so it may not be five. <laughs> I was so sleepy, I just did it and I didn't even go back through it. So hopefully there are five bullet points here, but if not, we'll add some more as we go between so helen's want to invest between 15 or 20 years awesome 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 yeah most of us have wanted to invest in a in for a long time frame but we keep pushing it to the side so we're in a place now where we need to kind of um take a step back and figure out why we we're procrastinating on it what's stopping us um so that we can move forward and at least by the end of the year or early next year become the investors that we've wanted to be for these for such a long time. So the first thing ladies you need to know is the type of property that you want to invest in. Um, there's buy and rent, there's fix and flip, and now there's this new thing which is Airbnb. If you're looking to buy and rent, do you have the patience for long-term rentals? Who, raise your hand if you're looking to buy properties and just rent them out for the long term. Um, a lot of people that I know, when they come to me for investing, um, they think, I, I want to buy a house and rent them out so I'll have this residual income every single month. But if you don't have the patience to be a landlord, if you don't have the patience to... Um, get those calls in the middle of the night or on the weekend when your tenants are upset or a, or a pipe is broken or a toilet is, is not working. If you don't have that type of patience, you may not be ready to be a, a landlord. Um, if you're not willing to pay a management company, 
Um, the average fee for a management company is about 8 to 12 percent of your monthly rental income. And when they have to bring in new renters, I believe it's about a half month's rent to a full month's rent that they require or that they request. So if you're not willing to pay a management company and if you're not a patient person, you might want to reconsider <laughs> being a landlord. So who, which one of you guys have thought about being a landlord? And let me know in the comments what you're thinking now, since I went over a few things about actually um, buying and renting. And if you're shaking your head saying no to anything or everything above, you probably want to focus on flipping. Yeah, it's it's a lot. So a, a lot of people do it. Um, when we were doing rentals, property management, um, we... I can't even remember the the percentage, but we managed um, three 50 unit buildings and that was a long time ago. So it, it may be, a, it probably was a lot less than, but now the going rate is about eight to 12%. You have a project in mind for buying and renting. Let's see. Tink says, I still want to do it, but I want to work myself out. You want to work yourself out of it or talk yourself out of it? Let's see. Helen says, I have a management company in mind. They charge 10% and I would pay anything when the, and I wouldn't pay. Oh, that's awesome. That's cool because a lot of management companies charge um, to rent the properties out. Let's see. So that's a good savings for you, Helen. That's awesome. Um, Makiva says, at least since 30 years old, and she's 50 now. Well, see, you wanted to invest for a long time. We have to get you, we have to stop putting it off, Makiva. <laughs> uh, Tanya says, not anyone. I think I'm more of an Airbnb or a flipper. Me too, Tanya. I'm more on, actually, my plan is to have five Air, Airbnbs over the next five years, and then I want to start flipping properties. Um, to be honest with you guys, as a real estate broker, the market normally crashes about 10 years apart. Um, right now, we're in the 10th year. So in the next few years, the market probably will crash. Property prices will be super low. So we're going to be getting properties at, at like dirt cheap. Dirt cheap. Um, you're going to be able to buy properties and rent them out or buy them, hold for like a year or two and flip them at a huge, huge profit. <laughs> Makiba says, now I'd rather flip. Yeah, take some time to think about it. I don't want you guys to change your mind just based on um, tonight's webinar. You just want to make sure you're in a space where you are able to be patient with tenants. Um, yeah, we would get calls from tenants like they would be so, so upset over the weekend. Like we were closed on Sundays, but there was a um, like a, an emergency line, they would leave like 11 or 15 and 20 messages on the um, actual office voicemail instead of calling the emergency because they were upset. And we would come in on Monday mornings from with calls from tenants that um, should have could have easily called the emergency line. So things like that get kind of frustrating. Um, and you just have to learn how to deal with it if you are becoming a landlord. Helen says, I'd like to manage my own once I have time and help, but right now I'd have to go with a management company. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, let that be a starting period so I can have multiple streams of income coming in. They move. 
they move to something like commercial. They, oh, then move to something like commercial or flipping, right? Awesome, awesome. I do want to flip homes also, but I have been thinking of this project for a while now. I just need some direction. Okay, so make sure you let us know a little bit more about your project at the end so I can see how we can guide you, Stephanie. Yeah, Airbnb is the big thing now. Um, some cities don't allow it. So, Helen, you just have to make sure your city allows it. Um, so, when especially if you're buying a home there or if you're buying a condo there, you have to make sure it's allowed. Just like certain cities, I know Uber is not allowed. Um, so, you just have to make sure you're in the space to do the research, um, find out if it's allowed. Um, if it is, see if there's any permits that you will need to get from the village to even host or have an Airbnb home in that area. And if you're buying a condo, make sure that association is okay with that being leased out as an Airbnb. Um, I've, I've seen a few Airbnbs online that are condos, and I'm sure they've had to go through that association to make sure they are rentable as Airbnbs um, because some associations may not want different people coming in and out of a property or the, uh, the unit. All right, ladies, let's go ahead on. So ladies, put a time limit on it. A lot of you said you've been wanting to invest for so many years. Um, for me, myself, I would say it's at least, it's, I think it's almost 20 years now. Um, I've been helping so many other people invest. I'm putting myself, I've been pushing myself to the side. Um, so that's why when I close my home, I'm going to take this money um, and save it until I find the right investment property. My first investment property is going to be an Airbnb. Um, and it's more than likely going to be in Tampa because that's where I am. I'll be. And I want to make sure I am able to manage it myself so that I don't have to pay those management fees in the beginning. So make sure you put a time limit on it. Ladies, comment below. What? Let me know when you want to, what's your deadline? Comment and let us know what your deadline is for you to have your first property. My deadline for me to have my first property is February of 2019. Um, I want to give myself at least six months to be settled in Tampa and to get to know the areas a little bit better before I purchase an Airbnb. Fall of 2019. Awesome, awesome. So you're going to give yourself a year. Who else has a deadline set? Or if you don't, you probably should set one so we're not like putting it off this year. Awesome, Tanya. Where's your first investment going to be since you already have this year set? Makiba says summer of 2019. Makiba, are you in Chicago? Stephanie says, as soon as possible, within a year. Awesome, awesome. So I think everybody is about the same um, uh, within a year time frame, six months to a year, um, except for Tanya. Tanya is going to be this year. Tanya, you should buy an uh, Airbnb in Tampa. And I only say that because I'm going to be there. And I want you to come and do some some extreme couponing with me. <laughs> oh, okay. So you are in Chicago. Your lease will be up in summer of 2019. 
Okay. Well, make sure you keep in touch because I'm keeping my license here in Chicago because I'm going to be in Chicago during the summers. I'm going to be running away from that, um, the hurricane weather, <laughs> late summer and fall in, in Tampa, and I'll be coming to um, Chicago. So I'm keeping my license here. I'm going to be licensed in, in Florida and licensed in Georgia as well. Oh, yeah, I remember you did tell me that the other day, Outer Banks. I'd never heard of Outer Banks um, until yesterday when you told me that. All right, ladies. So here is the big thing that a lot of people have uh, that's stopping a lot of people from moving forward. Financing versus other people's money. Um, with financing, of course, you have to have, I'm not going to say perfect credit, but you have to have good enough credit for the bank to approve your loan. Um, most banks for investments, the minimum right now is 580. Um, but when you, if you have a score as low as 580, I'm not going to say as low because there are scores that's much lower than that. But if you have a score of 580, you won't be eligible for any of the grants. Um, right now, Illinois has grants starting at about 7,500 and on up to 13,500. But guess what? Your score has to be 640 for some of those and 680 for others. So this is the, the difficulty that people run in, into when they're trying to finance is their credit score is not high enough for them to get the cash that they need to purchase the property. So you have to kind of figure it out. Will I work on, a lot of you said you have, you're going to purchase within a year. Will you work on getting your credit score up during that year? And, or will you just be able to have that cash to go into a lender today or tomorrow or whenever and with a 580 or more score and put that cash as the down payment on your investment property or your first home or whatever it is you're, you're buying. And for me, this is my second home. I'm using this as an investment because I didn't plan on, I knew that I wasn't going to stay in Chicago. So to me, this is an investment property. I was able to get a first time home buyer loan um, because I hadn't owned my um, previous home for three years. So after three years, you're considered a first time home buyer again. I was able to get a grant for $7,500. I was my own realtor. <laughs> so what I, another thing I did was request the sellers to give me, um, I believe it was like five grand in closing costs. So I ended up only having to bring to closing $250 for a three bedroom, one and a half bath home in Westchester, which is a nice area in um, Chicagoland suburbs. Let's see. Tink says, I'll come coupon with you. I'm in You are. We have a few ladies in, in my other group that are in Jacksonville. So I think I'm probably going to be having some events over there in Jacksonville too. Yeah, I'm just, I'm basically going to be hosting events where my um, members are so that I can get to meet you guys. I'm basically going to be doing meetups, um, social media events, and also um, real estate events. <laughs> you want to rent where the ocean water is blue. Yes, I want to hear the water. When we went to Tampa a few weeks ago and our, our hotel room was right, right on the water, I did not want to leave Tampa. So here's another thing, using other people's money. When you're using other people's money, you have to be make sure you're in a place where you're prepared to present yourself as an investor to even get other people's money. Um, 
a lot of us see, we see these infomercials and, and things on TV, or we hear these, we go to these conferences where they're saying they bought these homes with no money down. They used other people's money. Yeah, they used other people's money, but they don't tell you that when they're using other people's money, they're going to them with a portfolio of probably other properties that they can show them a track record of what they've done in the past. They don't tell them that I'm using other people's money, but I have amazing credit. They've looked at my credit and they say, well, okay, I will finance you, but if you default on the loan, you will have to pay such and such back. But a lot of time when you're going and you're using other people's money, they're going to pull your credit just like a bank. They're going to shell it out to you basically as a loan. And then you're going to have to pay high penalties if you're not paying that back on time. Um, I have a client that I was showing investment properties. I showed him a specific investment property about a city, it's about a city away from me. Um, about two to three weeks later, he called me asking questions about that same property. He would went into the property and invested in this property with another realtor. And that realtor was a, also a hard money lender, um, meaning they lend you the money for a short period of time and if you're not able to pay that back in that 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, whatever the period of time is, they're taking that house. So he had questions about the paperwork. He had concerns about the paperwork, but in the end he had to go through it and lost a lot of money um, because he decided to go with that other realtor and hard money lender instead of purchasing the home outright um, getting the down payment assistance through the bank and then selling that property fixing it up and selling it um, he was a little bit impatient so he ended up losing a lot of money I believe it was like twenty one thousand dollars he had to pay out to them to keep um, that property and he had to take that loan from his parents in order for him not to lose that home. So kind of be leery of the hard money lenders. Sometimes they'll say they are a private lender, lender, but they're actually hard money lenders. When you see those interest rates are like 12% or that payback time of that loan is like six months or three months, that's a hard money lender. Um, a lot of time those lenders have a fee up front of about three hundred dollars um some up to a thousand i actually almost fell for this myself at one point um i was working with a an investor i'd sold him a couple of properties and we decided to go into investment investing together because i had great credit and he wanted to um, be the person to put the money up front to fix the property and we were going to flip properties together um, I put the 300, I think it was three or 400 down with the hard money lender. Um, and that lender just vanished. But luckily I had his information, um, went to better business bureau and fought to get that $300 back. Um, but a lot of people may be out of a lot more than just $300. So just kind of be leery, make sure you start do your research on better business bureau at that point. I didn't do enough research. Um, this was like right after I got my license many years ago. So make sure you're doing your research um, and don't just go in with private investors or hard money lenders that are not um, legitimate. Let's see, let me make sure I'm not missing any questions. If all of your jobs are in the same field, it doesn't count against you as much. Are you talking about with um, when you're getting financed, Makiva? Yeah, if you um, if you're 
Like, for example, I had a client that was working for a company um, in the middle of the process of financing. <laughs> she got two job offers um, and one was in a totally, total different field. Um, the lender told her, do not accept that job in the total different field unless you wait until after you close. Because if it's in a totally different field, then um, it doesn't count. I think a lot of lenders want to see that same type of work history for at least two years. So um, try not to change the fields. Yeah, Tanya, he totally messed up. And he started calling me, asking me questions after I had showed him the property. Um, in essence, as a realtor, I could have sued that other realtor because I was the agent that showed him that property, but he took my buyer and went and wrote an offer. And in the end, my client was out of $21,000 because he went with another lender, which was actually another realtor, which was a hard money lender and that basically gypped him out of all of that money. Thanks, Tanya. I forgot you were a lender before. You can answer all of these questions. <laughs> all right. So I've had a few ladies in my inbox. Not a few ladies. I'm going to say a lot of ladies in my inbox <laughs> over the past few weeks asking if I should get my real estate license. Drop a one in the comments if you thought about getting your real estate license. I've had so many ladies ask this question um, because they kind of see that it goes hand in hand. But what I, what I suggest is when you are um, in a space where you're considering getting your real estate license, make sure you have the patience to work with clients. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to put it nicely. Make sure you have the patience to work with clients, to work with lenders, to work with attorneys, um, contractors, appraisers. Make sure you can be all over the place and not fall apart. I've been licensed for, um, it's 18 years this month, and there are some deals. I just told my client um, yesterday, we were talking about her deal. There are some deals where I absolutely want to quit real estate. But then I think about, no, I put too many years into this. I'm not going to let it go for one deal. Um, I also think about the income that I'm receiving from real estate. As, as, an, as a realtor, one deal averages 5K. Um, so that is um, more than a lot of people receive from a nine to five. So if, I, if I'm closing one deal a month, there's no need for me to ever go back to a nine to five. So that's how I look at it. If I am in a space where I'm upset and ready to quit, I think of it this way. Knifey, do you want to go back to a nine to five? And the answer is heck no. <laughs> I don't ever want to go back and work for anyone else. I like being on my own schedule. I like being able to get up and do groceries on Monday or like today I did groceries on Tuesday because I don't have to go to work. Um, I don't have to um, sit on Sunday nights like I used to. I used to sit on Sunday nights and be kind of, I'm not going to say depressed, but upset because I knew that I had to go in and work for somebody else and not myself. So I always think about when i when i'm upset and ready to quit do you want to go back to that nine to five and that's a no not at all so when you get your license when you're thinking about getting your license you have to have a lot of patience um, because there's attorneys that you're going to be working with that have assistants that don't understand a lot and you'll have to do a lot of the legwork a lot of the process um 
You have to think about the fees. They have annual fees. They have quarterly fees for the, the different associations. So put all of that into place. If you are willing to work with other people, um, I think it's a great benefit to have your license because you are able to see every property as they become available. Um, you are able to see every, you're able to get access to every property as they become available. You don't have to wait for a realtor to come and show it to you. You can run comparables or comps to see how much the property is worth, worth before you even waste your time. Um, so that's the one benefit of becoming a realtor, actually two, the income and being or and having access to all of the property. Let's see what questions. Tink says, I'm in the process now of taking my test on August 13th. Pray for me. I sure will. Congratulations, Tink. What state are you in? I'm going to start setting up a referral like network type thing. So I'd love to add you to that. Is it necessary to invest? Oh, no, Makiba, it's not necessary to get your license to invest. You definitely just um, a lot of people have come to me stating they want to get their license and invest. Tanya says, I tried three times, but it just wasn't time for me. Oh, no, I didn't know you tried to get your license. However, I think as an investor, you don't have to No, you don't have to have one. Yeah, it's really emotional. It definitely is when you're expecting a check to cover your all of your bills for that following month and the deal just happens to fall through because one person doesn't want to budge. Um, my most recent deal that I have, um, my the buyer, I'm working with a seller and the buyers asked for an, a three day extension, not a three week or a two week extension. They asked for a three day extension and the seller, my seller denied that three day extension. Um, I kind of almost fell off my seat when I saw that because <laughs> I'm thinking you're basically going to cancel a deal because they are asking for a three day extension. Um, so in the end, the buyer ended up coming through. They were asking them for a three day extension so that they can bring in contractors to get estimates over the weekend. In the end, their, their contractor was able to rush out there and get the estimate. So it didn't fall apart, thankfully. Um, but I kind of almost like fell off my seat like, no, you're not about to let this deal fall through for three days. So we'll have to start over again for three days. Yes, Tanya, you're buying in Florida. I'm going to be your your realtor. Oh, yeah, Tink, you did say Jacksonville. I forgot about that. Yeah, so we'll both be licensed in Florida. <laughs> awesome, awesome. No, I don't think you need to be um, licensed to be an investor. Oh, you said what the what the DTI debt to income needs to be an investor. It's different. Um, I know as a first time home buyer, right now it's about forty five percent, um, forty four or forty five. I had a client that was like point three above that, and she wasn't able to get a a seventy five hundred dollar grant, so she had to go and pay uh, off a credit card and wait until that credit card was off and then go back and apply for that. That's going to be fun. So we should probably do some realtor type events too. I have, I have a lot of ideas, Tink. <laughs> I was actually considering um, Jacksonville area until I went to Tampa and fell in love with Tampa. So I'll be over in, in Jacksonville too to check it out. So here is the tip that I have for you guys. Join real estate investing groups like this group. We're going to have tips here in this group, but there are also 
um, real estate investing groups for those of you that want to get started in something like, for example, wholesaling or um, different things, different aspects of real estate. Let's, let's see. Let's go ahead and search on Facebook to see what groups there are. So, of course, just go to the search bar. All my messages are going to start popping up. Just type in real estate investing. And then go to groups. And these are all of the groups that are available for real estate investing. Real estate investing for beginners, real estate investing entrepreneurs, luxury real estate and investments worldwide i have learned so much from joining other groups whether it's social media whether it's real estate whatever i'm trying to learn i will search for a group on facebook and jump in um, and start asking questions i when i first started social media lifestyle my other business i wanted to build my own website. I didn't want to pay someone a thousand dollars back then. People were charging like a thousand dollars to build websites. Um, I didn't want to pay that. I wanted to figure out how to do it on my own. So I searched for a WordPress, WordPress um, website group and I jumped in that group. I walked through the entire process, process and every single time I had a question, I would jump in that group and my question would be answered. So these real estate groups are awesome and supportive spaces to be in. Make sure you stay here in our group and then check out some of the other groups. You may be able to find some groups in your area um, that have like meetups and different things like that. Um, what I plan to do um, once I get to Tampa is to start hosting um, meetups where we go and take drives and go to different investment properties around Tampa. And we kind of um, walk through them together and see if they're going to be good investments. So um, it's going to be like sort of like an investment tour type thing. And then it will end with maybe lunch or something like a little get together. So we're going to have some fun things going on. So you guys, you, you better stay in my group. <laughs> Don't leave my group, but make sure you check out others based on um, what you plan on doing. Let's see if there's any Airbnb groups. So there's Airbnb hosts, new to short-term rentals and Airbnb. See, there's over 1.8 um, K um, followers. Our group members, there are already over 2K members. Airbnb News. I might join some of these. See, ladies, there's some great groups you can find to be in to get that knowledge that you need to um, start your investment career. All right, let's keep going. Then we're going to get to our Q&A sessions because I know you ladies have specific questions. Yeah, I'm going to have some of the events are going to be virtual, but a lot of them, I'm not going to say a lot of them, but some of them will be in person um, because I want to start having in-person events. I've wanted to start doing in-person events um, for a while now, for at least since 2011, um, but I haven't um, had the space to do it. So I want to make sure when I move to Tampa that I'm moving into a home that can have a space to um, at least host about at least 10 women, maybe 15 women at a time. And I'll have like small intensives and small events at that, that home. Flip, I've, I've heard of it, but I've never seen it, Makiba. 
So I'm definitely going to have to check it out. <clears throat> okay, and we searched for a few investment groups already. Another thing, of course, is to go to investing events. Here's a big the place where I find a lot of investing events. Go to meetup.com and oh shoot. Why did it log me out? Oh, hopefully it logged me back in. You find a lot of events in your area. If you go to meetups.com, whether you're looking for events on just networking, events on just um, on social media, if you're looking for events on real estate, um, see like here it has healthcare events, creative funding for real estate investing. Um, and REIA is a uh, big platform that's available across the U.S. So you can find your local REIA events either here on Meetup or you can just go to their website and check out all of their events. Um, I think the first time that you're going to one of their events, it's free. But after that, I think they have like an annual fee of like two or three hundred dollars. But it's actually worth it because they have so many um, different speakers. They have so many different trainings and so many different events that they have going on. Um, business legal assistance, um, debt reduction, flipping for a living, flippers panel. Now some of these, when we're done, I'm going to go through some of these so I can put them on my calendar and start going. Saturday Sunrise, Toastmasters. This is my old um, group that I was in. Um, for those of you that are that have a struggle with um, speaking in public, you want to check out Toastmasters. Um, Toastmasters, I was in this group for about three years. I went into this group so scared to speak. My first speech, I was like shaking seriously on in front of that podium. Um, I felt like my hands were going numb, but I ended up in the space where I was able to speak in front of a crowd so well. I was able to speak in front of hundreds of people. I became the vice president of marketing and then on to the um, vice president of PR and then on to the vice president of education. Um, at the end of that year, they did ask me to become the president, but I think at that point it was time for me to go. <laughs> I'd been there long enough. I was over my fear of public speaking. So yeah, make sure you check out Toastmasters. And this is their official website. Oh, wait. Yeah, so go to Toastmasters.org if you have that fear of public speaking. I only paid, and most of the Toastmasters are super cheap. It's only like $50 for six months. So that's super helpful. Yeah, so Tanya says a nice size basement should be good. I don't think a lot of the homes in Tampa have basements. Um, I have a basement here. It's a full open basement, but... I just didn't see that as an event space, I guess, because it's so like dark and I could have brightened it up, but I knew that I wasn't going to be here in Chicago for long. Our library has spaces, but the library, the rooms that they give out, they have one board room, which is never available. And then their little meeting spaces are just big enough for two people. Yeah, it's not free and it's free for your first when you go in um, for your first time, but it's not free anymore. I think they were catching on to people just coming over and over again for free. Tanya, you're not shy. <laughs> Alrighty, let's go ahead and finish up so we can 
Oh, Q&A, ladies. So go ahead and drop your questions in the comments. Let me know. I know um, someone had a project that she was working on. And any other questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments. Let me know what questions you have so we can get them answered today so you guys can start moving forward in your real estate investing career. Stephanie had a project that she was working on. If you still have that question, go ahead and drop it in the comments below. And ladies, of course, if you don't have any questions, just let me know. We'll go ahead and end the broadcast, but I want to make sure I have all of your questions answered. We're going to have trainings here often in the group, um, so make sure you, you keep coming back to the group to check in if you're not receiving alerts. Um, all of our events that we have going on, our live stream, our trainings, I'm going to sharing the events tab so you will definitely receive the invites so just make sure you're um, clicking that you're going so you'll get the alerts how much money do i need for my first airbnb i know it depends on the amount yeah, it definitely depends on the amount. Um, I would say on average, the upkeep for an Airbnb have at least 500 per month for the upkeep by itself. Plus, of course, the mortgage, just in case you don't have it, it rented out um, for the entire month. I would definitely have that money put to the side. So, of course, the, the down payment to purchase the home or the condo, plus on average 500 per month for if you're if it's not going to be in your area and you're um going to have to pay someone to take care of it like a, a maid service every time that it's um it's kind of switched over to a new person i would say on average that would be about 500 a month <clears throat> How would you like to know, uh, would like to know, will I be able to finance a deal? I want to invest in single family homes right now, but I can't seem to figure out the financing part. Tink, have you, do you already own a home? Let me know that. Makiba, is it possible to buy a house with poor credit utilizing HomePath or HUD? Um, right now, HomePath is a part of FHA. And FHA's minimum requirement um, for buying a home is 640. If you already own a home, Makiba, I don't think you already, I don't think you, I think you're renting, you said earlier. If you already own a home, you can't do, well, you probably, I think you can do home pass, but your score would have to be 680. So as a first time home buyer, Makiba, your debt to income ratio would have to be less than 45%. You can't have more than 45% debt related to your income. And you can't um, already own a home for that. And I think you said in the beginning that you're renting now anyway. Ting says, I know there are hard money lenders, private lenders, conventional loans, but I'm not sure where to turn. <clears throat> Oh, so you, you're already owning a home. Okay, Tink, so there are there's a loan out there now. And I don't know if this is just in Illinois. I think it is just in Illinois. Check with your lender, a lender in your area, and see um, if they offer this program. And when I pull it up, just take a screenshot of it. Let me see if it's still available first. 
I here it is IHDA access. You can already own a home with this um, with this type of loan. They give you six thousand cash for down payment and assistance. Um, they there's an IHD all of them that says IHDA access. So just go to IHDA.org and look for the the loans that say access. Um, you have to see if it's in your area. Yeah, because this is Illinois, but different lenders have different names for it. Um, but just look for the word access. Ask your lenders if they have something similar, um, because this has been available in Illinois for since January, no, February. Um, and it gives people, they people can com have been combining these amounts. So the 6K plus 75k um, deferred, they would have to eventually pay the 7,500 back, but getting that up front to cover your down payment and you don't have to do it now, that's been super helpful to a lot of people. And I think there's, yeah, access repayable, 10k. So a lot of people have been combining these in order to buy their investment property or to upgrade to a different home and then rent out their current property. So um, just ask your lender if they have anything similar to this in your area. Yes, Makiba, student loans definitely count against the debt, um, especially because you're, you're going to have to pay them every month. Student loans, credit cards, cardinal payments. Um, um, yeah, it's just so many different things that count to your debt against you. If there's anything that you can pay off within this year while you're waiting and preparing to sell your home, make sure it's below 45%. I would even try to get lower than that if possible because those debt to income ratios change sometimes. Oh, Tink, you said you don't own a home. Oh, Okay, I thought you you said you did own a home. So if you if you do don't own a home, um, there are first time home buyer grants. Let me see what they're called in Florida. Seventy five hundred. So there are programs that are available, 2018 down payment assistance in Florida, and actually up to 15,000. So you can combine grants. And it's for any of these counties. So Tink, well, okay, so if you're buying a rental property and you just want to rent it out right away without moving into it, what I would suggest is getting a multi-unit because you have to live in the property, I believe, for at least five years in order for you to um, obtain that loan. You have to sign an affidavit saying that you're staying in the property for you to obtain that loan. But just think of it this way. Um, that's basically what I did. I've been in my home for five years. Um, I did have an offer on a three unit property, but the sellers, there were so many issues with the plumbing and electrical, the sellers in the end stated that they were not gonna cover it. Um, even though they did in the beginning. Um, so I would have been able to stay in one unit and rent out the other two units um, and just generate income that way. Yeah, definitely. If you're, it's going to be your first home, I would start with um, a multi-unit, two or three units, and start bringing in that income that way. And then maybe upgrading to your, your new home 
within five years and um and renting out that that final unit that you're moving out of from my understanding since i'm on an income driven repayment plan with my student loan and the payment is zero it won't count yeah if your payment is zero then no it won't count now it's based on the amount that you have to pay each month do you know if this is correct? I think Fannie Mae counts a certain percent of the debt, like maybe 2%. No, I think if it's zero, you definitely have to check with the lender in your state because it's different guidelines for every single state. Um, Fannie Mae does have general guidelines throughout, but each lender has their own um, requirements separate requirements so it may just be the lender that's requiring the two percent like for example i always work with the lender at inland bank um inland bank always requires that the buyer score is 640 or above but there are other lenders re that require the score of 580 or above so, I mean, it's, it's different requirements for different banks. Um, like I said, Fannie Mae has that specific guideline. If it's zero, basically, it, it will be zero. But if that bank requires that you show at least 2% when they're processing, then that's that bank's guideline. So you just have to check with different lenders in your area um, to kind of see what it is with that specific lender and figure out which one you're going to go with based on their responses. All right, ladies, let me know if you guys have any more questions. Um, if not, we're going to jump off and then I'm going to have another training. Um, probably I'm going to probably have trainings here every other week, but in between that time, if you have questions, go ahead and feel free to drop them in the group. I am going to um, be sharing tips here. I'm going to be sharing um, videos here that I find. I'm in a, um, in a, um, let me show you. I'm in a program called, it's called Bigger. A lot of you probably heard of this biggerpockets.com they have a lot of free trainings i'm on here every day in the forums um asking questions and um going to different events that they have but in order to have access to everything you have to pay for the pro membership which is 39 dollars a month um so since you guys may not be in that membership I'm going to be sharing information with you over in the group um, so that you won't miss out on everything that's going on over here. Now, you can get into the free information like their blogs and different things like that. But um, all of the tools that they have, the calculators that they have, you won't be able to access unless you decide to pay that $39 a month. Tiny says, so do I have to live in Tampa for five years in order to buy and rent an Airbnb? No, uh-uh. No, you'll probably, you'll probably have to put a larger down payment down, Tiny, because you're not living in Tampa, but you don't have to live there um, to have an Airbnb. Yeah, people are buying Airbnbs wherever they want to travel. I was on, on biggerpockets.com actually yesterday listening to one of their podcasts, and the guy was saying he's buying properties every place that him and his wife loves to travel they're retiring and um i believe he said right now he owns about five airbnbs in different different states um so whenever him and his wife feel like they want to travel they just block the time on that airbnb so it can't be rented and they just go stay in their airbnb so um yeah you can you can buy in Tampa the Airbnb without living there. Yes, yes. I love bigger pockets. I um, think I actually I have um, the fire stick. So 
sometimes at night when I'm going to sleep, I watch um, <laughs> Airbnb, you know, they have the, the videos of their podcast. So sometimes I fall asleep listening to um, their podcast. All righty. You're welcome, lady. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. I'm hungry. I am baking chicken. So if you guys are here and you're smelling this, you will probably be ready to jump off and, and eat too. <laughs> so I'm going to go and make my sides and grab my glass of wine and sit down and probably start watching Bigger Pockets videos. So, <laughs> all right, ladies. So thank you guys for joining. You guys have been awesome. Glad you guys had your questions prepared. But if you have any questions after we jump off, make sure you drop them over in the group and I will answer all of your questions as quickly as possible. So, all righty, ladies, hope you enjoyed this evening. I know I sure have. So have a good evening. Talk to you soon.